This is the VSD Inside Stream Dock N4 Pro. One of the most aesthetic and highly versatile stream docks I've ever used from VSD Inside. You get multifunctional knobs, which you could customize in terms of functionality, be it brightness control for your stream dock, volume control, page shifting, and many more. Not only that, if you look behind the device, you get a USB hub which expands your PC's connectivities. You get one USB-C and two USB-A ports. The other USB-C input is for connecting to your PC. Then as for the knobs, these can twist left or right, then you could also press them. Then above those knobs, you get a screen, which isn't just a screen, it's actually a touchpad with customizable functions. And of course, above that screen are more LCD buttons, basically 10 of them that also act not only as a screen, but also as buttons. These can be key binded to many different functions, be it hotkeys with your keyboards or even with your mouse. In fact, you could even assign these LCD screens as monitors for your PC's internals. Those LCD buttons are crystal clear, having a plastic cover that really allows the icons to shine. In the latter segments, we will go over some of the few plugins that you could use along with this device, and also some of the device and icons that you could download for free on VSD Inside's website. But before that, let's go over build quality. Inside the box, you get the dock along with its documentation and its cable. Pretty straightforward. The cable is a thick USB 3 cable, and you know this would do transfers at high speeds, though I'm not sure if it's 5 gigabytes per second or 10. Now, on to the dock itself. This is made with an ABS plastic housing all over, except the knobs being made of aluminum. The knobs have textures to them to allow you to grip it better when twisting left or right. Then it also has really good tactile feedback to give you signals on whether you've moved left or right. They also function as buttons so you can press them to actuate the buttons within, underneath the knob. The LCD buttons are made of really high quality plastic that shines very clearly, especially if you put pictures on the LCD screens underneath the buttons. Overall, this whole device packs on a little bit of weight. So you know that it's really well built in terms of plastic construction. In the panel where the knobs are attached to, I'm not sure if that's made of carbon fiber, but it has its texture. I think it's a good aesthetic touch overall, but adds mm, nothing really in terms of build quality. This dock can be tilted upwards with two levels as it has two level kick up feet, very much similar to keyboards. You can lay it flat on your desk or you can angle it two levels up. Then at the back of this device, you will find the USB-C in port and the USB hub. And I think this is designed really well to keep your desk clean of wires as everything is connected at the back. Though this could be a hit or miss due to the ease of plugging in USB devices onto it. It's clean, it's neat, but you're going to have to twist the device around if you want to plug something in. Underneath the device, you get a full rubber anti-slip padding so it doesn't move around your desk. And that's pretty much it. Very well built, high quality plastic construction. This is VSD Craft, the dedicated software for the Stream Dock N4 Pro. First and foremost, you have the scenes right here, and I've already pre-created four scenes. And then you'll have the pages down here. So per scene, you can have multiple pages. It depends on you how you want to set it up. You can have multiple pages for each of the tasks that you do, or you can have a dedicated scene for video editing and a dedicated scene for media or gaming. Let's move on to the basics that you could do on your stream doc. So say I want to add in another page here, just click on the plus icon there, and here, you will have the basic keys. You can add in a folder, and in this folder can also contain a lot more buttons. So you have a lot of pages, a lot of scenes, and also folders within the pages. So that adds in a lot of versatility to your setup. Moving on, we have the scene shift right here. What this does is this moves to the next scene. However, you can transfer to the next scenes that you have created with only swiping this touch bar. Moving on to the previous page and next page, this is pretty much self-explanatory. And then we have here the go-to page. So you could skip the specific page if that's what you want to do. You also have the page indicator up here, right there. I moved it up there so you know what page you're on. And then for the brightness, you could add that right there. However, I highly suggest that you go to the knob tab over there, and then move the brightness over here. That way, when you twist the knob left, it decreases the brightness. When you twist it right, it increases the brightness. And I'm pertaining to the brightness of the LCD screens on the VSD inside N4 Pro. I think one of the most important things to mention here is that when you click on any icon here, and you click on this cog icon right there, you could choose a photo for it to be the icon or you could open your icon library. Here, you, I already have downloaded a lot of icons which are free that you could download on the website of VSD Inside. Just click on this icon up here and you'll be led to their download page where you could get 
stream doc icons over here. There are tons for you to choose from and most of them are free. In fact, I haven't seen any icon pack here that has a price tag attached to it. Now, if you want to add in a scene, I know we're jumping from topic to topic here, but anyways, you just have the plus icon here and the minus icon here. And then if you want to change the names of your scene, you could head over to the cog icon right there and then click on the scene right here and then click on rename. There you go. Now, say you want to open uh, Zoom, this could trigger this scene. In other words, if you open your Zoom, it's going to switch automatically to this specific scene. And I think this, again, adds a lot more versatility and automation to your device. Let's move on to the more advanced settings that you could do. Firstly, with the advanced settings, you have here two tabs which I've already showed you a while back. You have one for the LCD buttons right there and another for the knob controls. Now, say for example, I want to add in controls on my knob that switches pages. I could just drag change page right there and move it over here. Now, I moved it over here because that is the LCD indicator for this specific knob right there. So if I twist it to the left, it's going to the previous page. Twist another to the left, it's going to the previous page. And you also notice that the page icons here light up depending on which page is active. Moving on, you have the brightness icon here, which we've already discussed a while back. Now, you also can add in a hotkey right there. So if you press on the knob, it's going to trigger that hotkey. However, you could also assign different keys that are triggered when you rotate to the left or to the right. Moving on, there's a lot more options here, which I personally have not tested because I am pretty much okay with the basic controls that we have for the knobs. You could add in mouse buttons here, by the way. Not sure if that's something you'll use, but yep, better to have it than not. Let's move on back to the key tab here. You have the option to add in this button right here, which when pressed will open a specific URL or a website. You also have hotkeys right here, where you could bind it to, say, Control F. Let's try Alt, Control, Shift, S. So there's a ton of versatility with the key binds you could do here. Now, moving on to the hotkey switch, this is basically you choosing two buttons right there. If you press it, once, it's going to function as D, and then if you press it again, it's going to then function as A. So it will basically be alternating between both. Moving on to mouse buttons right here, there are buttons that you could press right there. You could even have this move a certain axis, be it X or Y. Moving on, this open control right there will allow you to open files or apps. Open an app will allow you to open an app. Well, that's pretty much self-explanatory. And then you have another button right here for close, which is pretty much similar to Alt F4. Then you have the text here, which is pretty much like a text macro. Then you have passwords here, which I believe is like text macro, but with more security. And then lastly, you have multimedia buttons right there. If I move that here, you can choose how it performs. Be it previous, play, next, or stop. Let's move on. Now, there are lots of plugins for you to download. And if we click on this plugin tab right there, click on load more, all these plugins will allow you to control a specific program or an app. Say, for example, let's get this Spotify plugin. Just click on get. It's going to open your VSD craft. Click on allow. There you go. Let's go back there. Let's see. So it has already downloaded. Now, let's move on. Let's scroll down, see what we have here. Those are a lot of buttons, basically mostly media controls, because again, this is controls for Spotify. You have shuffle mode and remove from playlist. Oh, these, these are really good, huh? The next thing that I think is highly beneficial to a lot of PC users is this system monitor. So let's click on that. Let's download it. So now that we have it downloaded, let's just collapse this menu right here for system performance. Let me add in another page here so we can customize it. Let me move memory there. And here we can see the percentage of memory that we're already using. Let's move on with CPU usage. There you go. CPU frequency. There are lots free to use, even GPU temperature. So let me move that right there. And also CPU temperature. That is very important for me. So I'll keep that over there. So basically, yes, you could use this device also to monitor your PC's internals. Say you're gaming and you don't want to overheat your system, this will allow you to monitor your PC's internals. So briefly scrolling down the plugins page here, I think it's worth mentioning you have controls for Adobe, Excel, Illustrator, Discord, Spotify, which we've already used a while ago, Voice Mod, Windows 11, OBS, but we already have OBS here, by the way, just right there. And a lot more plugins to download.
Okay, so before we close out this review, I think it's very important for me to note out some of the few perks that will really make your designing of your very own Stream Dock more enjoyable. Now, if you click on a button right there, and then click on this cog icon right here, you could do a screen capture with the icon that you want to apply. Say, I want this icon right there. Click on the check, and there you have it. So it makes it a lot easier for you to customize your Stream Dock device. Now, going back to some of the few controls here that we haven't explored yet, you have here the OBS Studio, which I've shown you a while back. You could record, you could stream, you could shut down your virtual camera if you want. You could even control your audio from here. Moving on, you have useful notes right there as well. Calendar, time options, weather query. Now, I think these are a good plus, but I personally don't use them as the only tools that I use is already found here in the basic toolbox right there. Now, if you have any questions, let me know in the comment section down below. If you're having issues with your Stream Dock device, VSD Inside has a Discord group that you could join. I might link it down in the description below. So be sure to join that Discord link and go ask VSD Inside reps for any questions you have regarding your device. Links on where to get your VSD Inside N4 Pro will be in the link down in the description. Again, join their Discord group if you have any questions, but you could also ask me and I'll get to you as soon as I can. I'll see you guys again next time.